Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. We're back here again at C2 Tactical in Scottsdale. I recently watched a video on the Wilson Combat Channel with uh, national champion shooter Austin Prohl talking about his grip and how he teaches grip to students to grip the gun. Um, it's, there's a couple points in there that are different than how I teach the grip. And so what I wanna do today is I wanna get a little bit of objective data uh, because he might be right and I might be wrong. Let's check it out. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. So first of all, I don't know Austin at all, but I do have friends in common with him, okay? So uh, I got a chance to talk to Adam Winch today. Uh, I am also friends with Mike Seeklander. They both have, I mean, Mike is obviously a Wilson Combat shooter, just like Austin is a Wilson Combat sponsored shooter. They shoot on the same team. So they know each other well. Uh, Austin lives in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's where, um, you know, Adam was from for a long time. So from everything I've heard, incredible dude, obviously an incredible shooter. You go watch the video, I've linked it in the description. Dude can shoot, okay? So no question about that. Like way can shoot, well, way better shooter than I am. Um, and uh, from everything I've heard, a fine human being, a really great person. So, so I'm not trying to start no wars on the internet here, okay? I'm trying to test technique. Because I, my, my brain says, my, my gut says that, you know, Austin talking about this is the grip that I have built in order to be the kind of competitive shooter I am makes a ton of sense. Because you've got to build a grip for yourself, right? So we always say that principles are universal, but applications are personal. Because what's his hand size? What is his you know, strength. He's clearly a strong guy. You see across his upper body, the dude is yoked. You can tell, you know, he doesn't skip the gym. And he's probably got very, very, very strong hands. Looks to me from just from his forearm size, that he probably, my guess would be, has 150 to 175 pounds of grip strength. And so one of the things I worry about for that is what works for him may not and probably will not work for your average person who doesn't have his physical attributes. And, and listen, Attributes matter, right? If you, <laughs> there's a reason, like, I don't care if it's shooting sports or if it's jujitsu or what. Size matters, strength matters, and all those things matter, okay? And, and I'm not saying he's wrong at all. I'm saying if you're teaching other people that share those attributes, awesome, rock and roll. So that's like, if you're teaching in the military and you're teaching a, a tier one unit in the military and you say all these people have to be highly physically fit and have to be very strong and they all lift and so they all have big grip strength cool, then that's great. I end up teaching a, a bunch of people, like when we go teach the, the evidence-based pistol skills, there's a, 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 an array. We might have some people in that array and then we might have people who deal with rheumatoid arthritis or uh, just you know uh, regular old arthritis or they're older, they're smaller, their hands aren't nearly his size or his strength. And so uh, I think that, that again, Principles are universal, applications are personal. So the first part of his grip, I really agree with. He says, listen, you wanna get as high up on the gun as you possibly can. You wanna get your hand up there way high here because what you're trying to do is you're trying to grip the gun as high as you can. Remember the, the, the recoil force comes into the locking block here. That's where it transfers into the frame. You're holding onto the frame, not the slide. The slide's the movie part. And, and uh, this is the, the stationary part and it transfers right here at the locking block, right? Right in this area here. So, so that again, that's where it's coming from and the higher I can get up behind it. And I love what he says, you know, I want mush here. I wanna mush as much as my hand in there as I can. And I agree with him in that and I try to do the same thing. And I try to teach students the same thing so it's that, you know, you don't have this space here if you can. Now, of course, everybody's hand size is a little bit different. He's got, you know, kind of this big beefy mitt here where he's got a lot of muscle and a lot of, of flesh between his thumb and forefinger. So he can do that and that's good. Not everybody has that though. So what we wanna do is again, get as high as we can up on the tank and then get our fingers around here. And what we'd like is a, a grip that lets us push front to back. Then he says for his second hand that what he does is he, he kind of cocks that 45 degrees and he wants as much of his thumb up here as he possibly can. And, and to do that then, then that fills and he doesn't care about the space down here at the bottom. Okay, 
Uh, you also will notice he does a very Neil Widener thing. Neil has big giant hands, well, it looks like Austin has, and that this finger here really creeps around the front and gets out of the way so that he can get that hand up there real high. His thumb is flagged real high, and he is way in it. Now then, I'm gonna put this away. Be pointing the gun up range. Um, then what he does is he says he wants to push in and he pushes in real hard here. And then that kind of opens up the bottom a little bit, but he's trying to camber in on the top of the gun because in his mind, he says, listen, when I do that, I get a flatter shooting gun. It might work great for him. Apparently it does work great for him. And even on camera, you can go, okay, looks like it does work for him. <sighs> Here's what my gut says. Now we're gonna put it on the, on the recoil meter and we'll see. My gut says that's just because he's so dang strong. And because of that, he can put enough pressure at the bottom of the gun because from a physics perspective, right? So the gun is going to recoil, it's gonna flip this way. And I've done a whole video on it. So, so you know, hit the link in the description to that video. Is that, that the, the muzzle rise is a torque equation, right? It's physics, okay? So the torque is equal to the force times the sign of the angle between where the forces are and, and the angle between them, right? So it's uh, torque is equal to force times R sine theta. Okay, cool. Geek alert. All right, great. So that's gonna push that up this way. Then we, we resist that recoil really by the front strap. Here is where we start to resist that recoil because as the gun moves this way, we can either push down on, on the front strap that, that, that gives us a torque in the opposite direction or what he's trying to do is he's trying to put enough friction on the sides of the gun to, uh, to stop it in its tracks there, to, to absorb it in a smaller angle to return it back. I think that that has some merit. I think that it's probably less for shooters of a less grip strength than it is for shooters of a high grip strength. Because what I can do if I have a really high grip strength here, I can really push on the top of the gun and, and really get enough friction on it on the sides to kind of keep the angle at bay that it ends up going, right? So I can kind of keep it by, by, by making it, it, you know, deal with, with my force to keep it from moving up here. I think that, that that requires some real pressing strength, that requires some, some upper body strength and pectoral strength. But, you know, of course, you know, if, I, if I push my arms all the way out, I'll have almost none. If I give myself a little bit of bend there, then what that's gonna do is engage my pecs and I'm gonna push in on the gun and try to crush the stupid gun. So how are we gonna test this? Well, I, we're gonna go on the recoil meter on the Mantis X10, and I'm gonna do this a couple of different ways. He might be right, I mean, I, again, he might be right for almost everyone. We're gonna, we're gonna test. And what I'm gonna do is, is I have, I don't have his grip strength by any means, but I have probably about 110 to 120 pounds in each hand. So I'm going to try it in the direction that he's kind of talking about and how he's trying to do it and really push in at the top and see what I can get. Uh, then I'm gonna try my regular grip and, and you know really grip pinky power and see what I can get. Then uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna then use, try to use about half of my available grip strength. Um, that'll pull me down to around 60 pounds of grip. And then see, again, if I, if I go halfsies and I push in at the top, what does it do? And then if I go halfsies, but, but focus on the pinkies and turn it down, what it does. I, I'm not sure what's gonna come of it. Let's find out. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here, and you can see it, is I am going to kind of just do my regular grip. So it's kind of elbows down a little bit, head up, and I'm just going to Okay, that's my regular grip, all right? So, so uh, if you're going, all right, well, I had a weird muzzle rise on that last one. I, I tend to do that, okay? So I'm, I'm looking here, 11, 10, 11, 12, as much as 15 degrees of muzzle rise, not too bad. It's not my best grip that I've ever done. Let's reset. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna really try to, to push the top of the gun. I'm not trying to play it here. Okay. All right, stop and see what we got here. There's 10, nine, oh, seven is really good. Five, but a 15 in there too, and an 11. I mean, now, now, there's some recovery time stuff there. Is it better at, at really strong? I think maybe you might say, okay, so you know, let's negate the 40 degree one that, that at the end there, because obviously the gun's not rising 40 degrees on me. I just, 
I think it was a, a misnomer there. Uh, you know, but uh, again, a nine and a seven and a five, those are really good. Uh, and 15 and 11, those are really good. Now, uh, let's see about if I am a, a less strong shooter. Let's see what happens then. Okay, so now I'm going to grip, but I'm going to grip it with much less strength because I'm going to try to go 50%, like 50% of my gri available grip strength. Let's see. Okay, 50%. Now I'm going to say the gun jumped out of my support hand pretty good there. Okay, that was five shots with his grip at kind of a, uh, you know, let's just put this down. And obviously these numbers are gonna be higher because I'm not gripping the gun with as much strength, right? So let's take a look here. So there was 11, that one really didn't love it much. 0 0.6, so it's actually heading down on that one. 29 and 25. So, so obviously quite a bit, L let's test it on the other side. Okay, so now same thing. Trying to, trying to grip down, but grip with about 50% of my grip strength. Uh, let's reset and get going again. Okay, still got me on camera, good. Okay, gripping down 50% of my grip strength. Okay, there was three. Let's do a couple more. You can tell I'm not going super fast. 50%, 50%, pinky pressure. 50% pinky pressure, okay. So, okay, let's see what we see here. There's 15, 13, 18, zero, another muzzle rise it didn't love, and 19. So, um, so I think, and again, is this enough shots? I'd need to do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shots to really have some data. And of course me, it, it, did I really get 50% both times? Is it really accurate to that? No. What I really need to do is I need to have a bunch of shooters and use a tool like this. So maybe we would do that at the national conference and see what we can get, right? Test people's grip strength, put them on the Mantis, try, to, try them in each way, see what, see what the numbers say for 40 shots or whatever. Um, I, I, what I really think is going on here is that Again, principles are universal, applications are personal. So, so when you hear, hey, I want you to turn and grip the gun like this and torque up tall, um, ask, wait a minute, does that work with my anatomy? Does that work with my physiology? And I have nothing but respect for Austin. Dude is, uh, you know, obviously an IDPA national champion from everything that I know. He is um, a USPSA master class shooter. I am neither of those things. And so I'm certainly not disparaging the man, okay? And I'm not saying he's wrong. Um, I'm saying that when I put my hand up that high and I torque my elbows up, I will tell you that as a guy in his late 40s, that hurts my dang elbows. And um, I think that sometimes when we do this stuff, we, and he builds his grip for him. One of the things we have to worry about as instructors though, is I don't really care what I do, okay? It's not really about what I do. It's about how I can help the most number of shooters apply the universal principles to their particular situation. In this particular case, we need more data for sure, but for most shooters, I think what I'm gonna say is, I think that the, the tucking the elbows, get, torquing them in just a little bit and making sure that you're pressing on the pinkies is gonna give, for anybody who has less than probably 110 to 120 pounds of grip strength, gonna give you better results. When you get to that maybe 110 place, it probably is the, the maybe the break even point there. And then if you have more than that, you might get more out of the top because you can put so much pressure in because you've got real upper body strength too. And if you have high, high uh, you know, pec strength, right? You've got the big beefy Terry Crews, you know, pecs that you can bounce. Then uh, I, I'm sure then you can add so much friction at the top that, that your pinky pressure isn't as big a deal. And you've got so much grip strength that, that even when you've loosened it some, when you've lessened it some, you still have so much there that you can still get plenty of adequate control with it. I think that again, the principles are universal, the applications are personal. So I'm gonna stand by what I said for now. Austin, hey, I'd love to hear a response from you on how you think that works. Um, and I got nothing but respect for the guys at Wilson Combat. I don't have any relationship with them at all. I just, you know, I follow their YouTube channel. And so I saw this video, had a couple of people ask me about Austin's grip because I teach on the grip quite a bit to regular people. I'm gonna stay with what I've got, but you go and shoot both of them. Let me know what your results are. Seems like 10% of the comments and the channel are about my hair. And now 
for the next couple of months, you actually get some say in whether I keep all of these curls. You guys know I've just been growing this as a joke and as having some fun. But for August and September, we are gonna do a fundraiser for SWAT Ministries, which is an incredible organization that rescues underage girls from sex slavery, helps abused and abandoned foster and adoptive kids, and they need help building a school and building a community, building facilities on land that they've recently purchased in Chiang Rai, Thailand, and this is your opportunity to help them. We actually have two buckets over on the Active Self Protection website. One that says, John, keep growing your hair, and one that says, cut that mop off. So if you're angry about this, you can do something about it by donating at the link in the description to the cut it off. And if you want to say, hey man, it's just hair, keep it, I think it looks good, donate over there. When we get to the ASP National Conference at the end of September, we will total up the total giving, give it over to SWAT Ministries, and whichever bucket has more dollars in it, we will do live here on YouTube, and we will do it for if, in front of everybody. If it needs to get shaved, it will get shaved. So listen, if you're tired of the hair, here's a chance to do good, and you get a say in it. So hit the link in the description, be a part of helping abused and abandoned children, and tell me what's up with my hair.